back, Fubar here, and today we're covering base defense theory after 8.1. Now, the reason why I'm going to be talking about base defense theory after 8.1 is because I want to give you guys the ultimate thought process behind this, and this also will share why 8.1 is a good thing in a sense for us smaller players, and it also will be good for the whales because they'll be able to survive longer, but it will make us a little bit more difficult. And also, we will be able to, and we will still be able to blow them up, but it'll just take a little bit more effort. Now, as you can know right now, currently in the game, with the unregulated unit caps in the L4 events, base defense is very difficult to to survive, point blank, point blank. You can't really change that. Um Everyone here probably who's watching this probably has lasted a maximum four, five, six seconds when in a swarm, whether it's one player against your base or maybe 30 seconds if it's one player. But, I mean, it's literally like your base is paper mache. But now we're going to talk about how you can improve this and what's some things coming in 8.1. Other than the unit cap, they also mentioned in 8.0 they are increasing the fortified wall's durability. So, therefore, you're going to get, have more health based off your wall level. This was de- mentioned in the developer's notes. So, I'm going to talk about how we can optimize this now. So, the fortified walls, after your, wa- your regular wall hits level 32, opens up. Once that does, I recommend you level the, these walls 10 levels at a time so that means one wall gets to level 10 and then you go to the next one and get that to level 10 then the next and then the next because there's four and once you hit level 200 on the walls you'll have the max damage resistance of base damage resist at level 10 you'll have the max bomber resist on each wall so that means you should have 30 percent bomber damage resist against bombers at level 10 And then at level 200, you should have 50% base damage resist. Now, how do we increase these numbers? We're not going to talk about wall health. But how can we increase these numbers? How can we increase our survivability? Well, first step is research. You want to really work on your research in basic city defense, advanced city defense. But now, there's a couple other things that have kicked in. We got modern war tech that has base, uh, base defense tech in it that will boost your that will boost your base defense and also at the bottom tier of your tech trees in advanced you get base damage and also base damage resist so maxing these trees out will be beneficial in the long run but what i recommend is you work one tree then you start your modern war tree for that exact same unit. So that way you have the maxed out. So if you say if you're running two to three artillery, which is the most of your ground units, you I would recommend you focus the artillery tree. If you're running three tanks, I recommend you do the tank tree. And then you want to do the air force tree passively because that is a pain in the ass to do. I ain't going to lie. That is a pain in the ass. The air force tree is so expensive. It is kind of ridiculous as far as resources but in the air force street there is two techs that increase your base defense and base damage resist and your base damage so that is a plus and your goal is to get to these techs as fast as possible and that also gives you reason to go down and also do your infantry tree even if you don't run infantry you don't have to max it out you just need to get to the bottom tier tech but i would recommend doing that last next now i released a video a little bit ago about how you can increase your base shields if you're running steel fighter and thorn now it was recently discovered that shield health is directly determined based off the unit's overall HP at that time. So if we're running 
the unit of an SH or a modern MBT like I am running right now. You can see my health is 2.26 million. So that is a pretty significant amount. This is what is directly correlated when counting <clears throat> your base defense. So what we're going to do in this situation here is if I had Thor Countess Awaken, which I don't at the moment, I'm going to be working on her. I would put Steel Fighter as the lead officer. Thorn Countess as the aide. Now, the reason why, all right, is because Thorn has a higher shield, so we want that to proc first. And then we want Thorn Countess's shield to proc. So that way, the shield will then get an even larger buff. Now, on their skill tab slots, we're going to go for skills that will directly correlate with HP. So we're going to want to use the best balance skills, and we're going to want to use the best HP skills under protection. So therefore, that is going to be your bread and butter to boosting this. Keep in mind, though, with this combination alone, Steel Fighter will reduce officer skill damage with her awakened skill, and Thorn Countess will also reduce the normal damage from uh, normal damage from normal attacks so it's going to be a 10 percent less so that is a very large beneficial factor now what else can we do to boost base defense well you're going to want to focus on golden eagle golden eagle has a skill under his fourth skill that increases base damage resist by 10 percent and you can share this skill with another officer, and that will increase it to 20%. That is a very significant buff to your base defense. Because if you already say you already had your walls at 200, you're already at 50, now you're at 70. Then, if you run tip of the spear with, in correlation with, Vox you'll get an additional 30% base damage resist. But why are we running this? Well, Tip of the Spear does provide a troop buff and a firepower buff. And also, he reduces the skill prep time for his assistant officer, which is big because you want her, you want your damage resist up at all times. So that means now your base will have a 50% da damage resist a firepower buff on all your troops inside that base. Then the little other interesting thing about Vox is that she actually reduces the skill prep time for garrisoned officers by 0.5 seconds. That greatly helps with the shield staying up. That helps with dealing damage with your artillery. And this will also help keep your base alive. So you're th probably thinking in your head, well, now I can't use five officers. That's pretty significant seeing you only have 10 officers to garrison. So your other five officers, I was gonna re I'm going to tell you right now, you're gonna, I'm going to recommend Arch and Flame. Where is he? Saber of the Nation. Lady Liberty, Antonina, and Valkyrie. These officers right here will devastate, will devastate your opponents. Valkyrie's skill of sundering the armor will make it easier for your, the other units firing to do more damage. Whereas your artillery will do a lot more damage with Argent Flame on there, he also increases skill damage of his of his aid officer, and he also does hits multiple targets with his awakened skill. So therefore, that is huge. And you can also stack garrison troop damage on your artillery to do even more damage. Now you're probably thinking, well, I got. I need to also think about Air Force 2. Well, yes, you can. 
And the uh, unit I would recommend if you're going to do that kind of base defense, like targeting artillery groups in a swarm, I would actually recommend using the Liberty Bomber. Because of its AoE attack grid and the new mm, officer that just dropped, Rising Star, he does a lot of damage as skill damage and very effectively. And I would prepare him with El Cartero, Rictus Reaper, and last, and th th I'm doing this in order on how I would pair them. Okay? Golden Pixie. <clears throat> Golden Pixie, the reason why Golden Pixie is last is because the extra bombing run is not necessarily needed. Because when you're under a ba under attack, your base, you need to be quick as possible. So El Cartero with the, the stopping the troops from moving, very good. But also setting them on fire is a, a very beneficial too. To, so that way, if they are trying to get away, you're doing additional tick damage. And if it just can't, eh, so happen to hit a tank in the way, you're also going to do a little bit of additional damage. So that is what I recommend for base defense. Okay. So keep in mind these little tips here because this is going to make you pretty much like a somewhat of a star crest now i'm not saying you have to get to the level 200 walls you just work on these officers and you're going to do way better than you what you would normally do also after 8.1 if you're in gold man you're going to have so much if you were following the current meta and you're already got a 9.2 unit and you got to reset down to say 8.1 right now you've got enough to make all your units 8.1. You may have to build units, which we all know sucks, but you'll be ready to rock and get all those units to level 200, all modified out. And the most you're going to have to do is build them and also collect blueprints. And that gives you the time to do so and build a stronger army for you to progress up to higher tier L4s. So that is a very big beneficial thing. Now I did mention Starcrest there. You can't you can become Starcrest by slowly chipping away at it. Do not think you can't become him and do that epic base defense like everyone else saw because it is entirely possible as long as you dedicate your time to it and your focus on these things. You're not going to do it overnight unless you're a heavy spender, but you can get there. It just takes time. So Keep in mind, now I just shared with you how to get 50% base damage resist, which would equal to four level 200 walls in a shorter amount of time. So that should definitely help you in the meanwhile while you upgrade your walls to get that 100% base damage resist. Also, there's another thing you can do to increase that base damage resist further, which is actually through the camp buff system. As you can see right here, if you are running a six unit camp buff, you will have 18% damage to all units. It doesn't just apply to the single camp, all right? To all units and 18% damage resist to your troops and base. So that's an additional thing to go. Now, what I recommend, because it's very hard to run a six unit camp buff, is doing the level four. The level four gives you 15%. You're only losing three. And then you want to focus on a three unit secondary camp buff, which actually stacks up. And then you'll be at a 19% camp buff, which is pretty damn solid. Or you can even run the two and be at 17. It You'll be fine either way. Okay. But this right here is how you can maximize your base defense for the future. And that's what I'm also building towards as well. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please like, subscribe, and comment below. This is Fubar. I got your six. Peace.